Hey, this is Sandy. And Randy. And we're here on AT Corner. Being an athletic trainer comes with ups and downs, and we're here to showcase them all. Join us as we share our world in sports medicine. Welcome back to another episode of AT Corner. We are busting out the SPF and straw hats for some summertime stories, in particular summer camps. Which, by the way, I don't know that I actually have that much expertise on because as I was going through the stories for this episode, I realized I don't think I've ever worked a summer camp. Most of the time, you just hang around me when I'm working my summer camps. Yeah, I think you have enough stories for the both of us. I never thought about it, but as we were going through this, I was like, man, I really do have a lot of summer camp stories. Yeah, I can't wait to share your story about how we broke some little kids' hearts at summer camp. Yeah, that, (laughs) I've gotten carts stuck, Uh, the food's great, some camps are better than others, we'll get into that probably. Oh, and kids' attitudes, I think those are the best. Oh man, the temper tantrums that get thrown are so great. I love it. So this first story we actually have is about kids. Nice. And dads. Oh, what a great combo. So Katie L says, my favorite camp to work is father-son wrestling camp. It's all dads and little kids. The camp lasts two to three days, and it's basically dads reliving their glory days. Of course, anytime you get dads involved in this, it's going to become mostly about them. Yeah, is it for the kids or for is it for the dads? It became for the dads. <laughs> And little kids learning how to wrestle. But all the tummy aches, minor stuff that we normally see most of at camps, they had a dad to go to for. That is kind of nice. Yeah, that's really nice. And no overnight dorm supervision needed because dads. That's one thing. We have to talk about overnight camps. Oh, I I have definitely worked (laughs) plenty of overnight camps and have some interesting things about that. So I don't have any camp expertise but i do have wrestling a little bit of wrestling background that i worked for probably every weekend last year (laughs) (laughs) that's true or two years ago um so there was this this story reminds me this one kid and i know you know what kid i'm talking about yes i do this kid lost against another kid and literally he was doing fine he was like super energetic and then he just decided to do that thing that little kids do and he went limp yeah he just went dead weight and so then I was like, oh, maybe I should go check on him. And of course, I'm like standing like five feet away. So I so I go out and the ref is right there. And so I just asked the kid what I always ask the little kids. Are you hurt or are you sad? And he literally wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> like no words. So then the ref came over and he's like trying to talk to the kid. No words. The kid is not <laughs> talking to the ref. And so then the mom came out. Oh, she's so mad. And she picked him up and he was literally still limp, which I think I can still picture in my head. This little kid who's just like a sack of potatoes. I'm sure the parents that listen to us know exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) So then she put him in. I think that he had to go again or something. I don't remember. And she put him back in his position and he's still limp. So, of course, he's like not putting his feet on the floor. But then the ref is like tired of it and he just decides to start the match. And then the kid jumps up like he's perfectly fine and gets back in until he lost. And then he went limp again. <laughs> well, of course, he lost. I, like that was his coping mechanism. So I liked how we brought up the overnight camp already because usually an overnight camp, especially the ones that I've been at, it, they're around like middle school age. So. This is like really an exciting time for them because now they're really like on their own. It's like a cool sleepover with all your friends on a college campus. And then you get to hang out with college athletes, which, by the way, it is so funny to see because I usually would work the full set of overnight camps for the for the school I'd work for. So I see the fresh faces at the beginning of the first set of camps and just see the toll it is taken by camp four or whatever and how done <laughs> these college kids are with these like middle school age children. They're just so done. So there is so an overnight camp, right? So they have to be able to provide food and like snacks. So of course it's, it's a college camp and these are kids. So these snacks are not healthy snacks at all. Ramen. It, that- oh yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I think the big ticket item was ramen. Like that was the big deal. So, see, that's how they teach kids to live off of it. They start them young. 
you know, like overnight camp. This is what it's like. I bet the college, college. I bet the college kids had a hand in this. Like, <laughs> hey, we should teach them what it's like now. So I remember I got a call. I think it was in the morning, by the way, that a girl burned herself. And I thought like, oh, it was like kind of minor. Like maybe she spilled a little bit on her hand or something like that. So I drive over to the dorm where they were and they they had the girl in like the counselor's dorm. And I walked in there. I was Again, I was expecting something fairly minor. No, I'm still trying to figure out how this happened. But this poor girl spilled the ramen after it was hot all down her leg. Aw. I would have to say like a th- third of her thigh was burned oh my goodness oh yeah the skin was all jacked up and oh what did you do i cleaned it and patched it what'd you patch it with i just did band-aid and triple antibiotic and stuff did you have to send her was it bad enough? it wasn't that bad it was still a pretty good burn considering but it wasn't oh, it wasn't thing. too bad poor thing oh yeah i felt so bad for that girl i wasn't expecting that luckily i think it was towards the end like i think it was the last day so she didn't miss much. So I that's felt kind so of bad like a her. weird place to put in cool water. Like I don't know, go take a cold shower. That's yeah. Uh, they already kind of started cooling it. So by the time I got there, it was mostly just making just sure the wound, wound care. yeah wound care. I felt so bad for. I'm still trying to figure out how we spilled it down her leg. Yeah, poor thing. What time was it? Oh, this was in the morning. Which again, by the way, ramen in the morning. <laughs> college life (laughs) yeah they were really giving these kids the college life yeah it had to have been like 9 a.m okay so i gotta say you you do see a lot during camp and everything is fair game we got anonymous submission about a kid at a tennis camp get hurt while bowling okay i need to hear this so one of the fun extracurricular activities that they got to do during camp was bowling and this kid somehow smashed his finger between two bowling balls Which everyone knows that hurts. Oh, big time. But get this. He ended up fracturing his second and third PIPs and he needed stitches. (laughs) That's such a bummer. So he came there for tennis and apparently. Got hurt bowling. Yeah. But he was a champ and came back to camp to do whatever he could with his opposite hand. that's nice. You know what is funny about camps is like. They do so many other things besides the sport, which I mean, I get you can only keep kids entertained on one thing for so long. It's just so funny. Like one of the camps they would for like softball, they would have swimming days. Like there's some days they would take the kids to the pool or my favorite is they actually schedule time to take kids around the tour, like a tour of the campus, which I get it for a kid. That's kind of a big deal and it's kind of cool. But after you've been on a campus a few times, you're like, why are we scheduling that? Like who thinks that's really that cool? Do you remember when we were cleaning up that one soccer camp you were working and there was that hawk that like came at us? Oh, yeah. See more camp stories. <laughs> yeah, we were it was in in our soccer stadium. And as we were driving around, this hawk just jumped out of the bushes, not like at us, but stepped towards us to let us know like, hey, this is my home. Back off. It probably had food. Oh, yeah. Scared the hell out of me. Hey, here's another nature one. So Whitney said, one time a girl got a deer tick stuck in her head and I had to pull it out. She noticed by brushing her hair and she felt something on her scalp and her roommate went and looked and saw something there. I had to use tweezers to get it out. You see, anything happens. I can't like, no one, that would, that never happens. Like that never happens in athletics. Like just all of a sudden you get a tick in your head. (laughs) Only in summer camps does that happen. What's different about the summer camp than normal it's athletics? Because, it's because there's a large group of children in one area without parental supervision. Uh, you know that's why. <laughs> yeah, but what'd she, how'd she get a deer tick on her head? Uh, it's, the world may never know. Hey, at least it was like on her head and not like on her butt. Yeah, that's true. So here's another overnight soccer camp one. So Shelby C says, my favorite camp to work is an overnight soccer camp. We actually have a whole healthcare team on call 24-7. So we have nurses on staff in the health center that deal with the illness slash homesickness as well as administer meds. We as ATs are stationed out of the ATR at the fields and deal with any injuries that happen and concussions. Usually the injuries happen at the soccer field. 
but there's a Gaga Pit, Waterfront, and Wreck Deck. It's a really cool setup. We learned from the nurses, and the nurses learned from us. Crazy how much they don't know about concussion slash specific ortho evals. I wonder what they say about, oh, crazy how much the athletic trainers don't yeah, know about like, that's true. this. <laughs> so I was actually talking to her, and I asked her, okay, so with you guys and the nurses, who actually responds to the injuries? And she said, it kind of depends where it happens. If it's up at the fields, it's us responding. If it's someone that is sick or something, we call nurses to come get them, and vice versa. If something happens in main camp, the fields are set pretty far away. Literally have to climb over 100 steps to get them from the rest of the camp. It gets tough with the homesickness when we have a session happening at the fields. We generally have two ATs for four fields, which is about 150 kids at full capacity. As much as I want to help and comfort them, I can't sit in the ATR while other ATs try to manage all four fields. Exactly. That one's tough. (laughs) Yeah, a single AT for four fields. I think ATs have probably maybe the, out of all the healthcare professionals, I feel like ATs have the lowest amount of patients for homesickness. Really? Why? At, At camps. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Like it's kids, just you. Kids will be like, that's uh, a ba- that's a broad generalization uh, right there. Okay, maybe it's just me. I have very little patience for the homesickness at camp because I can't I can't do anything. I, I go play. I don't know. Your parents paid money for this. Just go play. Hey, your emotional intelligence is <laughs> is lacking. Yeah, I I don't know how they hired me to do camps. <laughs> So it's nice to have the nurses and to have other camp staff who can help when it's not a true medical thing going on. See, I think I think Shelby would agree with me. The patients on homesickness, I feel like, is low. No, she has four other fields to manage. Exactly. <laughs> you asked about frustrations in the post with camps, too. Our full-time staff that run this camp year-round have zero medical background. So thankfully, they are generally pretty easy to work with, but it has been a lot of development of protocols over the last few years with them. They don't see why the Lightning EAP needs to be more than a paragraph, or an AT license is per AT, not just by facility. That's actually really, really a good insight for working with people who, I mean, honestly, how many people know who what an athletic trainer is? Or at least in California. I would say California, I think, is the one that it's... It's really a difficult time. I, th- I feel like everywhere else in general has a pretty good understanding. It gives you a it gives you a great chance to educate, though. Yeah, absolutely. And show our worth. She goes on to say, we can also butt heads over kids not participating. We've had kids fake concussions to not have to play because they can say headache, nausea, sensitivity to light slash noise. And with no outward signs of that, we can we can't clear them. The directors get upset because their parents are paying a lot of money to have their kids at camp, and it's obvious they are faking for whatever reason, but we won't allow them to play. Well, that's when you you talk to them. I mean, I'm not saying anything about this situation, but like for me, when I've had this in the past, I've had a lot of kids fake concussions, and I usually explain to them what the repercussions of that may be, and then I give them another chance to okay, is this really what you're feeling? Or, and I try to give them a safe space to tell me what they're really feeling. And I'm going to tell them, you don't have to play if you don't want to, but you don't have to have these symptoms to not play. Yeah. She continues with, this is my third year. I was contracted for last year, but COVID shut it down. But yeah, it's been cool. The main director of camp basically gives us free reign. We do the ordering of supplies, write the policies and make medical decisions. He has full trust in us, which is wild to think since we only work for him up to three months of the year. But it's great. It's such a unique setting and atmosphere. Yeah, seriously. I mean, it sounds like Shelby's being a great advocate for the kids and and for ATs at this camp, too. Absolutely. And speaking of like kind of off the wall or like homesickness type stuff in one of the camps that I work. See, I'm telling you, I have a lot of (laughs) camp things. I had a, she was probably like middle school. It was her second period. Like menstrual period? Yes. Okay. Like real life. Like she came over and she was describing the symptoms and I'm like, hmm, 
so then oh I, is this the one who had like the stomach ache and... oh yeah she had cramping she oh. just she was a mess and i asked like have you had this before and she said there was like the one time or something and i was like oh no that's what's happening so there's really nothing i could do i said you might want to call your mom and have her bring you some meds <laughs> so mom did come by lunch to get her some meds did you have a heat pack or anything nope i had ice that was about it I think it's really cute she opened up to you. I know. That was very <laughs> nice. I felt so bad for her because there's at that moment at camp, I can't do like there's nothing. No, I can there's do. not really anything. And then the worst do. part is that's probably her. That was her second time experiencing that. So she doesn't know her routine of what would work for her or how to, you know, how that feels. And it could maybe it felt different than when it first popped up. So I was just like this poor girl. Did she was she did she have supplies or anything or? What was she asking you for? Just that she was She was, was just telling me that, yeah. It uh-huh. came with her stomach hurting. Poor thing. So then through my history, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Poor thing. So Stephanie's story I'm a little jealous of. She was talking about working gymnastics camp, which I think you've done one of those too, huh? I haven't done a camp. I've done a tournament. Mm. I've done a tournament. I used to be a gymnast, so I'm really jealous. Um. Anyway, so and you saw you saw Sean Johnson. Who I, I did. Uh, I did see Sean Johnson from a distance. I uh, I he came home and told me, and I was so jealous. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, so Stephanie F said that she loves working gymnastics camp, and the kids are so amazing at such a young age. Most of the time, camp is four to five days long, and they basically spend the first day seeing where their skill levels at, and then they'll group them together based off it. Each group works with each coach to work on skills they want to learn or refine. They pepper in choreography for floor every day, and then they do a dance at the end for all the parents. It's pretty fun. I mostly deal with hand blisters from bars when they don't have their own grips, so I usually end up making some with athletic tape. Our gym coaches are really great about promoting spatial awareness by putting them in the safest positions when they fall, so I haven't had too many acute injuries to deal with yet. So I gotta say, this is something that I grew up on because I was a gymnast before I was a dancer. So this is something that like I is ingrained in me and going and seeing other sports and not seeing this happen is just like super befuddling to me. Um, I learned to fall. That was like the first thing they taught me was how to fall and how to bail. And I feel like that's not taught in, in your typical sports. No. And it's the same thing with weightlifting. Like when you first learn how to lift, one of the first tools you should learn is how to bail from a lift correctly. absolutely absolutely i just don't get it yeah it it's a very important thing that gets overlooked all the time although i will say i have seen working football sometimes they'll do tackling drills where they tackle to the floor and then roll and so they're they're working on those rolling which i think is very beneficial but i gotta say that's the closest i've <laughs> seen to learning how to fall yeah, I'd say that's you right. You know how many landing injuries I've seen? I can't think of it. Uh, maybe pole vault. Pole vault, they teach you how to land into the pit. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, that's the pit's very similar to a gymnastics pit. Yeah, so. they, they kind of go over how to land and like what your mechanics should be. So that, that makes sense. Pole vault's a scary thing sometimes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Especially when you hear a pole snap. That is probably the most bone chilling sound you'll ever hear. I've never heard that. It's it scares the heck out of you. It's so I assume it's loud. Oh, it's loud. Does and it... It, it? The worst part is it gets accompanied by a big. <gasps> Does it usually break when the per? Oh, I gotta say, I, I mean, I I gotta imagine the person's probably what like halfway up. It can't not when the person's all the way up, right? That would make sense. The pole wouldn't be bent. It. It, it a lot of times it's when they start to get off the ground so it's at the point where it, it's probably right before they leave the ground is when it'll kind of go so are you worried like splinters at all or are you more worried like falling it could be the fall okay yeah and depending how the pole snaps if it recoils and hits them i've had that where Ugh. i think it hit one of my athletes in the calf it hit them Wait, somewhere how how just when the pole snapped, how it recoiled, and it just like kind of like a whip. I cannot picture this right now. <laughs> Do you want to go on to the next one? Yes. So this one's by Whitney. 
I had a freshman cheerleader learning how to stunt. The instructor came over and asked if we can come look at them, and they think it's an ankle sprain. They brought her over to the first aid table, and I evaluated it. She had a tib-fib fracture. Oh my goodness. Okay. I wish I knew if she needed surgery or not, or if she cheered okay. She was absolutely not in pain. She said, oh, it's just sprained. Can you tape it so I can stunt? (laughs) Classic kids. And I'm like, hun, you need to go get x-rays. I'm pretty sure you broke it. And I felt bad because that same team had a girl who got in strep. And she was roommates with a girl who was remission from cancer. It was a hot mess of a camp. That does sound like a lot. That's a that's a lot to deal with at once. Also, that's one thing about camp that's such a bummer. A camp is a little bit better because at least you have a span of time with them. But especially working per diem, if you're just like working like a tournament or one day, um, if something happens and you don't get that follow up, that's that's a, such a bummer. Yeah, tip fib fracture, man. You, that's one easy way not to be a happy camper. Ah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's right. I had to throw it in there. Just like the kid who I had the first C-spine. Actually, I guess the second C-spine. The second of three C-spines that I had in like a six-month span. Seriously. Actually, like a three-month span, I think. Yeah. Um, The second kid, it was actually just a... not. I shouldn't say just a, but it was a spinal contusion. And he had to do rehab and wasn't in... He couldn't play for like four weeks, five weeks at least oh man yeah they took him out completely but i only knew that because i kept coming back yeah that's true so speaking of ems imagine working in action sports camp with ems that's a little bit far away like okay like i could see this being a challenge like hospital 45 minutes away okay that is definitely a challenge and actually just read it <laughs> I have worked in action sports camp for the last three summers, about to start year four. And two years ago, a month after I passed my BOC, of course, I had my first emergency experience. And by the way, this person was not not certified working. They were an intern. This, and I, this camp takes interns. And I was the only athletic trainer to arrive to the scene for an open forearm fracture. It was the most wild experience I have ever been a part of, especially since the closest hospital is 45 minutes away and the closest level one trauma center is an hour and a half away. Rural ATs. I was going to say that's, I, wow, that's crazy. Rural ATs definitely feel this pain. So if you are one of them, please reach out to us. I'd love to hear your stories. The feeling after an emergency is something we don't talk about enough and needs to be normalized too. Seriously. We stabilized the arm and tried to keep the camper calm for about 35 minutes until EMS got there and then passed him off to EMS. But we asked for a paramedic and they told us it was just an arm. So they didn't think we would need a paramedic. We got taken by EMS who stopped and picked up a paramedic. Of course they did. (laughs) To the level one trauma center and got emergency surgery. Which we do have... Not a picture of the surgery, but we have a picture of the x-ray. So we're going to post that on our Facebook group that we'll talk about at the end. That's exciting. Yes. I was a mess for the rest of the week, thinking about him and all the ways I could have handled it better. But seeing him after was a relief. That's like getting closure. Yeah, no, definitely. And a lot of times for these camps or for per per diem, you don't get the luxury of getting that closure. No, not at all. So I asked this person as I was talking to them, if this camp is normally like that where because you'd think if they're going to have an extreme sports or like an action sports camp um you'd think they'd want ems closer yeah you would think so or at least you'd think they'd pick a location because this this certain camp has multiple locations you'd think they'd pick a certain location that would be closer to ems you would at least hope So this person said, yes, it always does take that long, unfortunately. We have access to Life Flight that can get there in about 20 minutes, but we don't use it unless life-threatening, so we're usually waiting. The wait's tough, especially when the kids are crying and really upset. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, 
that's really all you can do is just stabilize and prevent them from going into shock. That's something that I'm really interested in because as I'm working with more and more ATs, uh, especially right now, we have a really big staff of seven ATs right now. So um, something that I'm getting to see is how people respond differently. And when I respond to something, I am constantly talking to the patient and making sure that they're understanding what's happening or I'm preparing them for what's going to happen. And I know, or, or even as I'm testing them, like on the field, I'll be like, okay, this is what I'm checking right now. Okay, this is good. And I'll give them like affirmations along the way. But I know some athletic trainers who are silent during that, their yeah, eval. And that's true. as an athlete, I would be, I, and I think this is probably why I prefer to keep talking is I would be absolutely terrified with my my mind racing in that silence and so that's probably where i get my yeah seriously um, the way that i eval but i'm interested to see what you guys like maybe we should put that up on our facebook group or instagram or something that'd be a good one what do you do do you talk a lot or do you just do are you middle or you do not i mean i've seen you eval before i'm kind of middle like i'll talk to them make sure they're good but i also don't want to overdo it overwhelm and make them feel like okay, now you're just kind of bugging me. So, you know, it kind of depends on how they're looking. And like, if they're pretty calm, then I, I know I don't have to say as much. Um, a lot of it's just kind of updating them what's going to happen. Um, if they're really out of control the whole time I'm talking to them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, of course you have to figure out, you have to assess the situation. Yeah. And if someone's mad, I'm not going to keep talking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no way. I usually try to stay away from that. Oh, you know what? Speaking of mad, you got to tell your story about that little baseball kid who was that oh, little yes. pouty kid. So, so one the, of my favorite stories ever. <laughs> so the baseball camps that I, I would work would, they had kids a wide range of ages. I'd say like youngest, what, maybe four. It was young. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five. And then they kind of went up to like almost kind of middle school kind of. So they had a very wide range of these kiddos and you know they'd spend some part of the day going over drills and like you know teaching them like basics and stuff like that but then at the end of every day they'd play these small little games you know and then they would kind of do it to where the groups are somewhat close in age you know some have an older kid than the rest of them or something like that right and you know what? It's just so funny how into these small games that these kids would get in. Like, they would get so into it. Like, they're yelling at the coaches who are the umpires for the game. And mind you, there's like one or two. And they're college athletes. So, they're I mean, they're, they're not taking this super serious either, right? And this one kid was letting our coaching staff have it. <laughs> like, there was one. Like How old was this kid? He was like four or five. And they're so mean to each other. Like, that's the thing that I don't get is like some kid messes up and they're like, you need to stop messing up. I would have done that if you would just catch the ball. Like, oh, my gosh, (laughs) these kids are so mean to each other. And then finally, so this kid is already getting upset because he's in the outfield. And naturally, kids don't like being in the outfield because no ball is going to get to them. really. (laughs) Yeah. Could you imagine a little kid? like hitting a ball in the outfield yeah no so this kid's really not doing anything so he has a lot of time to stew and he's already getting upset because the first baseman hasn't made a play in like three batters and so he's getting mad and he's he's not catching the ball oh, we're gonna lose because of him he would say that too <laughs> and then finally the the tipping point was there was this one play i think it was at first base and the the coach called him safe he, he was probably out like who cares like i don't know if he's out or say like obviously the coach being the umpire didn't get a good look at it or something right this kid was so mad <laughs> he's just he yelled at him stormed i i swear his little arms folded he stormed off sat next to the bags with his arms folded and did the <laughs> and just sat there he was done playing <laughs> he didn't want to play anymore he was over this he was done And so then this is the point that I arrived because I used to hang out with Randy at camps all the time. And so I would, I, I just, I don't know where I was. I'm, I, I don't know what I was doing. I can't remember what you're doing that day. So I had just arrived and I, I get over to Randy's cart and I was like, Hey, why is that kid? 
why is that kid over by the backpacks? Oh, I told her. I told her the story. <laughs> this kid was so done. Like, my favorite thing to imagine is just imagine like a major league baseball player doing that like imagine mike trout just being so done with whatever happened that he just stormed off the field and sat in the dugout and just pouted like slouched and everything yes with (laughs) arms folded and just "Hmm." so one of Haley's favorite camps to work was a baseball camp for kids to teens at a d1 facility and she said her not favorite part was definitely not holding on to 30 kids Epi pens and inhalers. That is true. That is true. You get a lot. Yeah, you get a lot of things. She said the camp was on a few fields, but there were beautiful shade trees everywhere, and the staff all truly wanted to be there and enjoy their time. It had a good variety college coaches and players, even strength coaches helping out. It was a summer during my graduate school year, so it was a very nice way to get summer work in and be in my happy place. Baseball diamonds. Let me tell you the baseball camps that I've worked had the best food. Really? Oh, uh, we had the best food for lunch. Like what? We had we would alternate between Jersey Mike's and Del Taco. Um, see, those are the opposite of my favorite. I would. I didn't say they're like my favorites, but compared to other. No, I d- I don't like those. Places. I know you don't. If I were to choose two places like that, it would be Subway and Taco Bell. We would sometimes get, uh, Subway, but they really wanted Jersey. Like they baseball loves jerseys. So anytime they would try and get sandwiches, it's probably coming from there. Do you guys do Gatorade at your camps? We used to uh, for the larger ones, we will, because we used to do like the Gatorade camp. So it was actually oh, sponsored by Gatorade. Yeah. So we had you to kind of have to. with that. <laughs> but once we stopped doing those, I would sometimes bring a small jug for emergencies. Oh, yeah, that's another thing, man. Kids in Gatorade. What about it? They are like the ultimate critics. <laughs> like they don't like they don't come up and say, hey, thanks for the Gatorade. This is cool. Like we're getting free Gatorade. No, they come up and be like, oh, I want this flavor. <laughs> Yesterday's was better. I'm like, look, kid, this is what you're getting. <laughs> this is what you get today. OK, well, do you guys have this one? I don't know. You're getting this flavor today. As you can tell, I'm a gem. I'm a gem with these camps, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, these kids, man, they are the ultimate critics of Gatorade. You know... And they sit there guzzling it down. The, I remember... Oh, I imagine. That's sugar. I remember there was one kid, again, baseball camp. He had four cups in one setting, just staring at me while he was drinking them. He was like... <laughs> I'm like, dude... <laughs> Like, it's just Gatorade. Like, (laughs) relax. So, actually, Whitney has another story, and this one's also about Gatorade. And she said there was one time me and another AT dropped 14 gallons of Gatorade in the elevator. Oh, that's rough. That's when my hatred of Gatorade began. (laughs) That's pretty rough. I'm just trying to think of that smell. Just, I can cool. honestly say I'm glad I have not spilled. Also Gatorade. cleaning that up, not just wood. like hosing it down outside, yeah, like no. in an elevator. I don't even know up. how to do that. Yeah, that's rough. You clean up the best you can, then get out of there. <laughs> Flee the scene. You call it in. You call it in. Like, hey, someone, someone spilled Gatorade. <laughs> that's r- actually that reminds me. One time, someone spilled. Uh, it must have been Gatorade or fruit punch or something. It wasn't. It was at the um, parking garage of my college. Okay. And you couldn't see it from the door, like, because there was a door from the stairs. And so I opened the door and it was red punch or something. And I actually thought that I walked into a murder scene. Oh, man. I, <laughs> That's pretty awkward. <laughs> That's pretty terrifying. It was terrifying. I, I had to, like, do a second, like, glance. And I, like, my heart skipped a beat. It was really scary, actually. So speaking of uh, uh, things breaking or spilling things, there was, again, overnight camp. So this was in the evening. This was like at 9 o'clock at night. Like we were done after a long day, and I'm ready to go home. But each time the day would end, I'd go towards the dorms, and I'd go to the counselor's room and just double check to make sure, like, hey, no kid said anything. Like, right, they don't need anything before I leave. And they were like, nope, we're all good. We'll, you know, we'll see you tomorrow. Like, all right, cool. See you tomorrow. 
I get in the car and I go because at the same time we would have this camp, the school or the university itself had another like event going where they would use the dorms and there were a lot of people doing a get together. Right. So I couldn't go a certain way. So I literally would take a back way. It's a little tight of a back way, but it's pretty quick. So I'd go that way. And I don't know what happened on this day, but when I was trying to get out in the tight way, I got stuck. The cart got stuck. Would the cart get chunkier for a second? or No, because like I kind of got off the sidewalk and I went into a spot in the dirt where it got like it would not move. So I tried my hardest to get this thing out. I even tried. I was sitting in it, rocking in it, <laughs> thinking that would help. And then I kind of got out to try and push by myself, thinking that would work. And this thing was not budging. So I had to do the the humiliating thing and i had to get the counselors to come help me <laughs> i was like hey guys who are also your athletes right? who are all who are also athletes not your athletes yeah. specifically yeah no this uh, it wasn't the sport i was in charge of but uh, i at least knew them <laughs> and i said hey guys can you uh can you do me a favor <laughs> so i got i got three three of the soccer athletes to come out and try and push this cart for me we still couldn't get this thing out. Wait, really? Oh, it was it was so stuck. It was not going anywhere. We we tried everything, man. Finally, we found like some wood and we we tried to shove it in there. It still wasn't working. Finally, I think we just got it in just right and it got out. I was getting ready to abandon it. I was just gonna say <laughs> I I'm gonna deal with this tomorrow uh, and maybe we, we might have to call it in. <laughs> um. But no, we did get it out. I think it took us about thirty minutes. And we got it out. So the big question is, did you ever go that way again? Yes, but I was a lot more careful. <laughs> I probably never would have gone that way again. Oh, no. It's the best way to go. <laughs> it, is the, it is the best so way So the to long go. way is really long then? It, it's just it's, there's a lot of people. Oh. Because at the same oh. time, that other event was would be mm. going on and these people would be walking around, which is fine, but it's also like... You, you you get tired of being like, okay, cart, excuse me. So I'd rather go you another have a way. horn? The horn doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh. Which that would still get annoying, though. <laughs> oh, you got to tell them the story about us breaking the kids' hearts. I think you should. No, you tell better. So, again, soccer camp. So, if you ever worked with a camp with like middle schoolers, right? That's a that's around the time everyone starts getting like weird crushes and like starts being weird. There's this one camp that apparently the girls had a crush on Randy. He was a star of the show. Apparently I was a star of the show and <laughs> they did everything for him. Hearts were broken in this camp, let me tell you, because Sandra, what happened? This one I wasn't around for a lot of, I think, for the first few days. No, you weren't. And I must have been at, like I must have been working or something. I think you were. And then uh, I just showed up one day, probably on day three or four. I think it was day three. And I, of course, I know the situation. The the, I wish I had a video of these girls' faces when Randy pulls up with me in the cart. Oh, yeah. And it's... when they realized who I was. Oh, yeah. Just the disappointment and just the broken hearts. Yeah, it was it was pretty funny. The hung heads. Yep. Poor girls. Yep. That was such a bummer for them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any more camp stories? I know. That's what I'm trying to think. I I feel like I got so much. Oh, you know another thing about camps? Man, I, I'm on a soapbox today. Camps are the ultimate way to age yourself. What do you mean? There's this one camp I was working, and naturally, again, when the kids are, you know, criticizing your Gatorade, we started talking about athletes, particular basketball athletes. So I asked the kids, I said, hey, because I, I did a certain reference, and I said, hey, do you guys know who Allen Iverson is? All the kids looked at me with blank faces. They're like, no. I'm like, well, great. Now I'm old. For the basketball fans out there, I'm pretty sure you guys know who Allen Iverson is. My wife is currently looking at me like, I don't know who that is. 
But you're not like a huge basketball fan, so I think that's okay. I'm no, you didn't I'm not, grow I'm up not. with basketball. No. So yeah, I I really I enjoy kinda, the sport, but I, I really don't, kinda, I don't follow it at all. I really curled I up anyone. and looked at myself in the mirror and said, "Well, now I'm old because I know who Allen Iverson is, and no, and none of these kids do." I wish I could sympathize. Talking about practice, not the game. Practice. That's the quote. I was going to say, I take See, there you it. go. <laughs> That's the same look I got from the kids. Well, now I'm old. Yeah, honestly, I thought that this episode was going to be extremely short because in the beginning of me posting this on our Instagram stories, we barely got any episodes, which is very rare. I was concerned we were not going to have an episode this week. <laughs> Which has never happened before. Hey, we pulled it together. Luckily, I I also have a lot of camp I stories. I told Randy, I was like, this... And I was expecting this, and you'd think camp stories. Everyone has camp stories. Except for me, apparently. Maybe everyone's like me. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well. So oh, one th- more thing. Sorry. Last one. Speaking of baseball. It feels like at... at you know how like we talked about the homesick and like how kids don't want to play? Or like someone was being mean to me, and now they don't want to play at all. Baseball had a solution to this problem, and it was one of the volunteer coaches who's who's older. You know, he, I I'm pretty sure he's like retired, so this is he was able to volunteer for stuff like this, right? And it was tradition for if there was a kid who just was kind of getting unruly and didn't want to be there, they'd send the kid to him. Oh no! But, oh he he let him know. <laughs> oh he let him know. These kids would like tears would be coming out. How is that a way to keep kids at camp? The, the the sniffling. It wasn't like he was mean to them. He was just very stern. And he's an older gentleman. That's gen- the same thing in a kid's mind. Well, I just don't want people to think that. It was <laughs> abuse. It, you know, he was just stern and he's an older gentleman. So the kids get really terrified because of that. So there'd be tears and then... Yeah, because terrified is a good way to keep kids at camp. And then they'd go back to their position with the sniffles. And then, you know, after lunch, they'd be kind of fine. All right. (laughs) So you guys, if you guys are new, we do every other episode as education or stories. So this was obviously a story episode. Our next episode is education. And if you guys want to submit your own stories for upcoming story episodes, head over to our Instagram stories. We will post throughout the week what stories we're looking for and what questions you guys can answer to help us in our polls. Also, we said we were going to talk about the Facebook group. So... Our Facebook group is, we have a Facebook page that we don't really pay attention to. It's just a copy of our Instagram. Um, and honestly, I, I don't look at it at all. I actually post from the Instagram to Facebook. So um, we also have a Facebook group and that sounds more interactive. So it's called AT Corner Community. If you scroll down, it's in the show notes. Um, it's also facebook.com slash group slash AT Corner Podcast. And you know you're in the right place if it asks you a question to get in. It's, it's just where did you hear about our podcast? And then once you do that, then you'll automatically be approved. And then you can network with other listeners of the show. You can answer our question of the week. You can hang out. You can post things about athletic training, ask some questions to the group. Um, Really, it's just a fun place. And it's been growing. Yes, it has. It's been really exciting to watch. Yeah, so I think that's it. Andy, you got anything else to add? Nope, that was perfect. Thank you for helping us showcase athletic training behind the tape. Bye.